so it's hard to believe it's July already. Uh, I don't know where the year has gone, and it's yeah, it's not been the best of years to be honest. But <laughs> I'm thinking ahead. It's always good to think ahead, and uh, yeah, plan for the future. Most of my thoughts actually are long term planning right now about what I'm going to be doing next year. But I have managed to get the plan done for July and I've got a rough cut plan for August. And I'm going to share that, share that with you. So, as always, I'm going to share the screen that's on my iPad. So hopefully you can see that now. So, first off, I do a late batch of celery. I like to do a late batch because I like to grow it over winter in the polytunnel. So we've got fresh celery all year round. Um, it's not a hugely important crop for us. I just do a couple of tubs. Uh, it does okay in the tubs, but you do have to protect it with fleece uh, if you don't want it to uh, yeah, die in the frost, basically. It will stand a light frost, but a really bad frost like we had last year, sort of down to sort of minus nine degrees centigrade. It'll kind of just about cling on, but it won't be very productive. So second up is the chard. I'm doing perpetual spinach and rhubarb chard. I might do some bright lights as well. Just whatever I find basically in open seed packets. And I'm doing this second batch because, you know, we've already had a very hot early summer. Some of my previous succession of chard has already started to go to seed. Basically chard under stress in midsummer can be pretty prolific but it can tend to go to seed. So a later batch is kind of always a useful bit of a reserve. Um, last time really, latest time really, now you can sow uh, the radicchios. Uh, I'm only just doing this particular variety because it was recommended by Charles Dowding. Uh, I've never really been overly impressed by radicchio, but I do think it looks lovely in the salad mixes. It doesn't taste fantastic, but it looks lovely. And so I'm going to give it a go. This is my last um, attempt at growing decent radicchio. Um, and we'll just put, you know, like a couple of leaves, a couple of small leaves in each of the salad mixes just to brighten them up in winter. Uh, Napoli carrots. So I've just got one little bed of carrots still to do uh, for eating in winter. Uh, most of my carrots for sort of late winter and spring, they're all in the ground, they're all growing really well. But it's nice to have some sort of young, thin carrots in winter that sweeten up really well. Um, and I find that sort of early July is about the latest that I can sow them and get a decent harvest. And your results might vary. Um, I can do it because I've got a bed that's in pretty good sun. If you've not got it under good sun, then it might be a bit too late for you. Um, if you've got it in really good sun, it could probably go even further, you know, towards the middle of July. Um, starting to do my Asian greens again. I've done Joy Choi all the way through summer because Joy Choi is just really good. It, it's, you know, you've got about a three to four week kind of harvest period off it before it goes to seed, which is really great, which means you can take a few outer leaves off it for a couple of weeks and then take the uh, whole head out. Um, so that's a pretty good one. Uh, but from now onwards, you know, you, there's less chance that they'll go to seed. There's still a chance, you know, if it's again too hot for them, but uh, it's worth it because we haven't got any Asian greens uh, that we're harvesting right now. Let me just answer this phone call. Okay, so I'm back. Um, yeah, cause we haven't, we're not harvesting any Asian greens at the moment, so it would be nice to get those back into the stir fries and the soups and the salad mixes and all of that sort of thing. So I'm doing red pak choy, I'm doing tatsoi, I'm doing komatsuma. Uh, there's so many different varieties of Asian greens. I think it's just best to just pick a few that you like, otherwise you spend a fortune on seeds. Um, so most of my salad onions that are uh, seed, seedling stage at the moment of summer island which is a good one for harvesting in the middle of summer but it's not the best tasting salad onion in my opinion the best tasting one is guardsman so by July I'm starting to sow guardsman again it's a little bit early so they won't be the best tasting salad onions I've ever had but if I leave them until August and we'll talk about that in a bit more later on um, 
then it just takes them forever, you know, and, and they don't sort of mature until sort of October time. So if I want to be eating something in sort of late September, early October, I need to start it in July. So that's why I start it now, because we really don't like to be without salad onions in our diet. And then I've got a whole load of lettuces, and these are all the ones that I recommend for this time of year. You know, I don't I have different lettuce selections for each season. Um, Canasta is really great. Navara is really fantastic lettuce. Uh, Grenoble Red's okay at this time of year. It's not the best. And I've got a few different uh, Salanovas as well. The Salanovas are fantastic if you want to harvest whole heads. So if you're sort of lazy like me at this time of year and just want to pick a whole head and not bother with having to harvest individual leaves, then um, yeah, the Salanovas are the king of lettuces from that perspective. And then, like I do the overwintered celery, I also like to do overwintered parsley so that we can harvest it all year round. Parsley does grow outside all year round, but if you want really high quality leaves for use in salads and things like that, and you want them uh, to be, keep on picking them continuously all the way through winter, then it's best to grow it under cover, in my opinion. Um, you can do kale still at this time of year. It's pretty much the, as late as you can do it and get a decent harvest from it. You can do it in August, but it's got to probably go under cover by a sort of October time in order for it to keep on growing to maturity. Uh, and even then you'll only really get a great harvest in spring. Um, but I'll do it just in case I get any problems, just a couple of um, plants, not too many. And then another later batch of Asian greens. Um, so some of those will go in the polytunnel and be very short-lived uh, and some of them will go outside and be much longer lived. Uh, I actually find they do pretty well in the polytunnel even though you know I talk about the heat and the heat stress resulting in them going to seed. I don't often find that for a very short-lived harvest. I only want to harvest them for sort of three or four weeks because I want to get the whole polytunnel replanted but I like to just put something in the polytunnel beds underneath the tomatoes and it gives me a reason to start watering those beds so that they're well hydrated by the time we come to October when I replant. So it means that all the way through sort of August and September I'm still watering those beds and I'm still harvesting things from those beds and uh, yeah that's what I like to do. And terrain peas. Now peas are notorious for just getting mildew if you plant them this late. Uh, or if you sow them in July, basically, uh, and then, you know, sort of plant them out in August, late July, early August. Um, they almost always just get mildew, but terrain is a variety that I've grown, and it's bred specifically for planting late, so that you, and it doesn't generally get mildew. I, I've done it for a couple of years now, it hasn't had, had any mildew problems. I don't do a huge amount, because we're only just picking peas fresh, um, for eating fresh, uh, and... So it, it's a nice, it's a nice piece. So I just do a couple of containers of that, and it, it served as well. I'm starting to put uh, more turnips in the ground now. So uh, we've had turnips actually pretty much all the way through summer. We haven't had really any problems with them going to seed. Um, they've been pretty good cooked. They're not fantastic uh, eating fresh um, or uncooked rather raw. But as you get towards autumn for autumn harvest you know that they're, they're nice and you can use them just like you can use uh, radishes and talking of radishes by the time we get to august we'll start doing radishes as well and late july i'm going to start trying a few varieties i've just put one in here which is i can't remember what it's called now rubino uh, which is a nice kind of red ribbed one it's a bit like red kitten um it's I'm always trying to find a good variety of spinach for late summer. Uh, I want a nice variety that's good in salads. Um, obviously, it's still quite likely that spinach will go to seed if you sow it in late summer. It's only in late July. By the time you get to early August, you can kind of be much more confident that you can sow it and it won't go to seed. So that's July. Not really very much going on, to be honest, in July. Most of the action was back in um, June when we were sowing all of the purple sprouting broccoli 
and that was a really important um, month for us because purple sprouting broccoli is a really important crop for us. Uh, and also the autumn cauliflowers and the autumn calabrese and all of that sort of thing. But that's all behind us now. That's all growing well. So let's take a look at August. OK, so we've got August and yeah, talking of radishes, we're going to do uh, cherry bell. That's the only one I really tend to do now. Um, the, 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 you know, I don't, it's not specifically cherry bell, but these sort of small sort of globe, scarlet globe, uh, cherry bell sort of types. Uh, I just find they're better than French breakfast now, um, they're more consistent, and they don't seem to get quite as much slug damage. So, yeah, start doing those. Really, August is the month, really, for radishes. Once you get into September, you can really only grow them under cover and even then it's only really in early September. By the time you get to October, I could just generally can't get a good quality radish to grow. So it's quite a short lived period for us, I think because of our light levels. Um, but it is the month for salad onions. I don't think there's any particular perfect date for salad onions. I find that doing them over a number, you know, a, uh, staggered dates you know sort of a, a batch every week for a few weeks will give you the best chance really of managing the varied weather conditions so if an early batch happens to do really well then you get to eat it in winter and if it doesn't do very well then you get to eat it in early spring you know that type of thing so you, you're never quite sure when you're going to eat a batch uh, depending on how the weather goes. But if you do enough batches over a wide enough period of time, you can generally manage to eat it all the way, all the way through autumn and winter and spring. So I'm gonna start with Guardsman and Leela, two of my favorites. The Leela was particularly exceptional, I would say, uh, last year. Uh, the Guardsman was pretty good, but you know, you can't beat that beautiful color of the Leela uh, onions. Um, Again, turnips, and again, I'm particularly recommending Tokyo grass. I think it's just so such an exceptional turnip. Um, definitely worth getting that one. And you're starting to run out of time with turnips. So by the time you get to the end of August, very difficult to get a good crop. Sometimes in a sunny spot with good weather conditions, you can get a good crop. But wait until September. And the chances of getting a good crop, unless you're sort of undercover in a really sunny spot and the weather's good, it's pretty slim. So your results might vary depending on where you are in the country. But for me, kind of, you know, mid early August is the time to start sowing your turnips. Just do a couple of batches and then that's it. But the beauty of it is that unlike in summer and spring, they hold really well in the ground. So you can plant quite a lot of them and just harvest them over sort of a month. Uh, they'll grow bigger in, in that period of time, but they won't go woody uh, and they won't go to seed. So now is also, early August is a time when you wanna start doing your lamb's lettuce. So I think lamb's lettuce is another exceptional crop for winter. Uh, you can grow it outside. In fact, it's better outside because it. I find the leaves, it really does well when the leaves are wet all the time. If they're, if they're not wet all the time, then you tend to get a bit of mildew on early sowings. So keep them well watered before you sow them and after you sow them, and hopefully you'll be okay and you won't get any mildew problems. If you do get mildew problems, sow them a little bit later. Um, it's a bit sensitive like that in when it, you know in the early part of its life. Once it gets going, it's fine and you never have any mildew problems. But as I say, early sowings are a, a bit of a challenge. But if you want to be eating it in November and early December, then early sowings are your friend because it is quite slow to mature. Uh, but it holds really well in the ground. Um, it doesn't go to seed. It's just really reliable. Um, and as I say, it grows outside really well. You can even grow it in light shade. It takes a little bit longer to mature, but it still grows. So it's just fantastic. So... Come to kale again, if you can put your kale under cover, like I can in sort of October time. Um, so I'll put it in a pepper bed or a melon bed or something like that after I've harvested those in, under a low tunnel. Then you can do your kale in sort of mid to early August. I'm doing a few varieties, scarlet, 
uh, Dwarf Green, Sympathic and Reflex. I don't particularly really recommend you doing lots of different varieties. I just happen to have open seed packets of all of those, so I might as well use a few of each of them. And you can put them in at quite a high density because they're going to be quite small plants all the way through uh, winter. You can have them as you know quite packed together um, so that you get a decent harvest off them through winter. And then when you come to spring, they will go a bit crazy. And sometimes you have to take the odd plant out when it's being swamped by the others. But during winter, it's better to have high density plantings. So I can put as many as 12 plants in per square meter or something like that and uh, they still seem to be quite happy. Um, also overwintered onions is, is perfect time in August. Now conventional wisdom has always held that you do two sowings of uh, overwintered onions. You do one at the end of July and you do one in the first week of August. Um, and I think with climate change this is no longer the right timing for them. I think it's better to do one in early August and then one in sort of mid to late August because if you, you know, what's happening at the moment is everybody's overwintered onions are going to seed because they're too big by the time they get to spring. They think they're in the second year, so they go to seed. So again, your conditions might vary, but for me, what I'm doing is is this sowing sort of... Um, uh, mid 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 August and you know another one in late August. And I even do one sort of in December as well, uh, which is the one that I'm sort of har the succession that I'm harvesting now, and that very rarely goes to seed um, because obviously the plants are really quite small in early spring, and so they know that they're in the first year, and so they never go to seed. Um, they're a bit later, you know, than the ones that are sown earlier, but yeah, they're, they're very reliable, and. Miner's lettuce, what a fantastic crop. So I've always loved miner's lettuce. I've always raved about it, but I've always grown it outside. And it does pretty well outside, but the leaf quality can be a little bit iffy, which means in general, a little bit of clean up. So you sort of harvest it, and then you spend five minutes going through, taking out the damaged leaves. And the ones that are left are fantastic. Uh, but then it takes quite a few weeks to regrow again before you can harvest it again. And then you, you generally don't, you might get one more pick if you're really lucky before it starts to flower. We grew it in the polytunnel last year. What a difference. Every leaf was perfect. We picked so many successions off. It just kept on growing and growing and growing at such a rate. And it was even under a little bit, it was under the trestle table. So it was in sort of light shade. So, yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. So I'm going to have two beds in the polytunnel this year under both of my trestle tables. I'm not going to do the salad rocket this year in the polytunnel because the salad rocket did quite well outside. Uh, and salad rocket isn't such an important crop for us. It did kind of stall really in mid midwinter. Whereas the miner's lettuce, it just kept on going. It just didn't stop at all. It kept on. It was fantastic. And everybody loved it. The, the leaves are much more succulent, you know, thicker and, and crisper than they were outside. Everything about it was superior undercover. So we'll still do a little bit outside, uh, just because we have more outside beds and we're sort of thinking, what can we fill this bed with? Um, but uh, yeah, undercover just seems to be fantastic. Um, and that is different to the lamb's lettuce that I mentioned before, because if you do the lamb's lettuce undercover, it probably gets mildew, but with the miner's lettuce, no problems at all. And then we've got the autumn lettuces. So August still too early to do lettuces for winter undercover, and I do all my winter lettuces undercover, but it's the perfect time for lettuces that you're gonna be eating through autumn. And I really love doing canasta and uh, Grenoble Red and Navara, and again, a whole load of um, the uh, Salanova lettuces. So, and then another batch, as I mentioned, of salad onions, and then we start with the spinaches. And I'm gonna do Medania and Rubino this year um, as my main autumn harvest. So these will be mostly outside, because 
Spinisha's fantastic outside, it doesn't need to be undercover. My undercover ones will only really be for harvest when these autumn ones start to slow down because, well, light levels are going down and heat's going down. And then I'll switch over to my undercover spinach. I'll take this autumn spinach out because otherwise I'll have masses of spinach in spring. And I'll plant crops that I want to harvest in spring in the, in the place of that spinach because I don't find as much point really overwintering spinach if I'm not going to harvest it. And what I mean by that is I don't find it's there's much purpose having it for in the months sort of December, January, February, and it's just occupying a bed. It's not being harvested during that period. Uh, and then when I come to spring, I've got way too much spinach. So it's like, what's the point, really? So I prefer to take it out and put a crop in that I actually want in spring rather than overwintering a crop that I don't. And I'd rather have spinach that can actually harvest in December, January, February, under cover. And, you know, that's actually then a worthwhile use of the bed because it's, it's actually being harvested continuously. And then, as I mentioned, my next batch of tough bull uh, and my next batch of lamb's lettuce. Interestingly, I tried Charles Dowding's timing for lamb's lettuce last year, which is much later than mine. And it wasn't ready until March. And by the time it came ready, it started to get mildew because we had quite a damp March, which is unusual, but, you know, it, it was what it was. So it, it started to get mildew and the stuff that didn't get mildew just went to seed. So really, it wasn't really a useful crop for me because I had loads of true lettuce by that time as well. So, you know, when you really need lamb's lettuce, is December, January and February. And if you want it then, which is when I want it, you've got to sow it earlier. Don't, don't sow it in early September. And then we're on to pak choy again and, you know, the, the same mix and some salad rocket. So that's the earliest time really I sow salad rocket is towards the end of August. So I can start harvesting it in sort of September time and then I'll harvest it all the way through uh, until autumn, late autumn. By then I find it slows down and you don't really get a meaningful harvest off it in winter. So what I like to do is to interplant it with garlic so that I take it out when we get to winter and then I just leave the garlic to grow on. So I'm basically getting two crops out of the same bed because the garlic obviously doesn't mind um, having the salad rocket there. Whilst the garlic is mainly just putting roots down, it's hardly growing at all. And then more salad onions, just keep on going with the salad onions and then that's it. So that is it for August. It is a pretty important time. You really have to pay attention to your dates, as I hope that message has come through to you. But your dates might be different to my dates. You know, you've really, over the years, you've kind of got to get this intuition. So I'm in the northwest of England in, by the sea. It's quite warm, although it was really cold last year. Um, it's quite windy, but we do get we don't get as much rain as some people do, uh, so we get a little bit more sunshine, uh, and it's a little bit milder than for some other people. But it's not as it's not as warm and sunny as it is down south, so you do have to kind of juggle these dates around because even a week can make quite a big difference in August uh, in terms of you know a week might mean being able to harvest something in. A week earlier might mean being able to harvest something in October rather than November, you know, so a week makes a month's difference uh, when it comes to, um, yeah, or things that are growing for harvest in autumn and winter. So, yeah, there we go. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.